While the preponderance of evidence published in the world's most respected peer-reviewed medical journals clearly shows that a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet is the most effective way to prevent and reverse chronic disease, conventional dietary guidelines taught to physicians, dietitians, and patients currently recommend a carbohydrate restrictor diet that contains approximately 35% fat and includes moderate amounts of meat, poultry, eggs, cheese, and milk. Unfortunately, there's a blatant disconnect between the evidence-based scientific knowledge and current dietary recommendations, which contributes to increasing rates of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune diseases around the world today. The majority of Americans fear high-carb foods, and the majority of mainstream media sources, including online news, print newspapers, online magazines, print magazines, and popular blogs shun high-carb foods like fruits, potatoes, and whole grains in favor of the more trendy low-carb foods such as coconut oil, bacon, and butter. At Mastering Diabetes, we believe the public deserves to know the truth about high-carb foods and their role in reversing insulin resistance backed by more than 85 years of scientific evidence. One area of confusion is that not all high carb foods are created equal. I will explain in this video exactly why refined carbohydrate from added sugars and grains that have been processed into flour have a different metabolic effect on your body than carbohydrate found naturally in whole foods. But first, I'll shed light on how a low carb diet causes insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes while a low fat, plant based, whole food diet actually reverses this pathology. Then I'll present you with some of the more recent studies which contend that animal foods can also worsen insulin resistance and diabetes and reduce your longevity even if you don't have diabetes. Why low fat? The idea of a low fat diet may conjure up images of relics of the 1980s such as Richard Simmons' step aerobics on video cassette late night infomercials selling you contraptions that claim to help you get six pack abs quickly and easily and grocery store shelves lined with fat free cookies, crackers and chips that basically just tasted like cardboard. But bear with me here. When we at Mastering Diabetes refer to a low fat diet, we aren't talking about that type of low fat diet. Fat free cookies and their ilk are not on the menu on our plan for optimal nutrition. There is a specific reason why we emphasize a diet which is composed primarily of high carb foods for preventing and reversing insulin resistance. And if you've never heard of this before, it may just blow your mind when I tell you about it. However, we must first investigate the reason why the majority of doctors, dietitians, and patients currently hold the erroneous belief that high carb foods actually cause diabetes rather than reverse it. Let's start with the basics. We're all taught in grade school about three dietary macronutrients that supply our bodies with calories. Carbohydrate, fat, and protein. When you eat any food or beverage that contains carbohydrate, your blood glucose rises. With the exception of meat, poultry, fish, eggs, butter, and oil, all foods contain carbohydrates. In people without diabetes, blood glucose is typically somewhere between 70 and 99 before a meal. After a meal containing a large amount of carbohydrates, blood glucose may rise as high as 100 to 160. With the exception of some highly processed foods such as oil, sweeteners, juices, and sugar sweetened beverages, all foods contain protein. However, Protein is found in a much more concentrated amount in foods that don't contain any carbohydrates. Meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. Protein has a negligible effect on blood glucose, although it can actually lower blood glucose a few hours after it is ingested. This happens because protein stimulates the release of insulin from the pancreas. 
Dietary fat has no immediate effect on blood glucose, nor does it stimulate the release of insulin from your pancreas. The fact that dietary protein can lower blood glucose a few hours after it is ingested, and the fact that dietary fat has no immediate effect on blood glucose or insulin secretion, has formed the basis for an avalanche of low-carb diet books and bad dietary advice given to people living with diabetes. But strangely enough, studies show that people who begin to reduce or eliminate their intake of high-carb foods like fruit, potatoes, beans, and whole grains in favor of high-protein and high-fat foods are actually more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than people who eat a lot of carbohydrate and relatively little dietary fat or concentrated forms of protein. In contrast, people who eat a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet actually improve their blood glucose tolerance and become highly efficient at clearing glucose from their blood. Populations of people who subsisted on a traditional diet composed primarily of high carbohydrate whole foods did not begin to experience cases of type 2 diabetes until their diet began to shift away from traditional high carb foods and towards more high protein and high fat foods. If carbohydrate is the only macronutrient that actually raises blood glucose, then why do people who eat the most high carb foods have the lowest blood glucose levels? Why do people who routinely avoid high carb foods in favor of high protein and high fat foods experience the highest blood glucose response when they do eat carbohydrate containing foods. This seemingly counterintuitive phenomenon was explained further in the late 1970s when magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, was invented by Dr. Raymond Damadian. MRI technology made it possible for doctors and scientists to see inside every part of the human body non-invasively. When this new technology became commercially available in the early 1980s, scientists began to notice that people with diseases of insulin resistance, such as metabolic syndrome and diabetes, have large amounts of ectopic fat in comparison with healthy people. They began to conduct studies showing that when healthy adults are given a meal containing only fat or a meal containing a high amount of fat, the amount of ectopic fat in their muscle tissue rapidly increased within hours of consuming the large amount of fat. If a high fat meal is just an infrequent one-off event in a healthy person, the ectopic fat that gets stored in their muscle tissue will be used as energy during an intense or prolonged exercise session. However, if the person repeatedly consumes high fat meals over a period of a few weeks or longer, the ectopic fat begins to accumulate more and the formerly healthy person develops insulin resistance and eventually prediabetes. When a person has developed insulin resistance, when high carb foods are consumed, blood glucose can rise well above 160. In contrast, when you consistently eat a maximum of 15% of your total calories as fat, only small amounts of fatty acids are stored in organ and muscle tissue, allowing cells to remain insulin sensitive. This is great news because when your insulin sensitivity is high, it is much easier to control your blood glucose after eating high carb foods. In the context of a low fat, plant-based whole food diet, the more high carb foods you eat, the more insulin sensitive you become. And this is why eating this way can prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes, as well as decrease insulin requirements in type 1 and type 1.5 diabetes. So why does storing ectopic fat in organs and muscle tissue cause high blood glucose after eating high carb foods? Let's go back to biology 101. When you eat carbohydrates, your digestive system breaks these carbohydrate chains into smaller monosaccharide molecules. And these monosaccharide sugars then enter your blood, causing your blood glucose to rise. Your pancreatic beta cells sense this rise in blood glucose and secrete insulin to tell tissues to uptake glucose. Think of insulin as an escort who tells peripheral tissues, hey, I have some glucose. Do you want to take it up? Insulin's primary job is to escort glucose 
out of your blood and into your brain, muscles, and liver. When insulin's ability to communicate with these tissues is compromised, glucose remains trapped in your blood, causing high blood glucose. When excess fat is stored in organs and muscle, these fatty acids stimulate a series of intracellular reactions that inhibit insulin from allowing glucose to enter. As a result, glucose accumulates in your blood and your brain and your body tissues become starved for fuel. You may experience symptoms such as lethargy, brain fog, hunger, and excessive thirst. The good news is that you can get rid of excess ectopic fat in muscles and organs using a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet combined with physical exercise. When insulin is effective at communicating with tissues, you gain the ability to eat high-carb foods like fruit, potatoes, beans, and whole grains without experiencing high blood glucose levels. When your brain and muscles have an adequate supply of high-quality fuel, aka glucose, you can feel good. You have an abundance of energy and are able to think clearly with no brain fog. Why plant-based? Now you may be wondering, if the consumption of excess dietary fat exasperates insulin resistance and causes type 2 diabetes, and if protein has a slightly blood glucose lowering effect, then what's wrong with eating a high protein diet? In theory, a high protein diet seems like a logical solution for managing blood glucose, and mountains of diet books advocate a high protein diet for everything from weight loss to bodybuilding. Some evidence demonstrates that dietary protein has a negligible effect on your blood glucose and can actually lower blood glucose a few hours after you eat a high protein meal. This happens because protein stimulates the release of insulin from your pancreas. However, when a high protein diet is actually put to the test, it worsens insulin sensitivity rather than improving it. How do we know this? Because a growing body of evidence shows that eating a single high protein meal causes dramatic blood glucose excursions for up to five hours after the meal. In addition, even when people lose 10% of body weight following a reduced calorie high protein diet, eating a high protein diet blunts the expected increase in insulin sensitivity normally seen just due to weight loss. In other words, losing weight is one of the most powerful ways to increase your insulin sensitivity, but eating a diet high in protein prevents this from occurring. Even more alarming, scientists are now discovering that diets high in animal-based forms of protein can actually shorten lifespan and significantly increase your risk for premature death. In contrast, protein found in whole plant-based foods such as beans, lentils, peas, whole grains, vegetables, potatoes, and fruit does not increase mortality risk and is instead associated with increased lifespan and health span. Why whole foods? When many people hear the words low fat and plant-based uttered in the same sentence, they don't hear the whole food end of the sentence. Many people comment, no, I can't eat that. Without eating some fatty foods, I'm gonna be hungry all the time. One simple and powerful secret to achieving and maintaining your ideal body weight without feeling deprived or unsatisfied after meals is to eliminate processed foods from your diet and eat as many whole foods as possible. One reason why most people struggle to achieve lasting weight loss on a conventional low-fat or plant-based diet is because they often eat significant quantities of processed vegan foods, which have been specifically engineered to bypass two critical satiety mechanisms. Number one, sensory specific satiety, and number two, the stomach stretch reflex. When you eat whole foods, both your sensory specific satiety and stomach stretch reflex are triggered to send a neurological signal to your brain that says, I feel satisfied and full. Sensory specific satiety occurs most notably when you eat a naturally sweet whole food such as dates, jackfruit, or mame sapote. After you've eaten a few bites, the sweetness begins to not taste as good as it did on the first bite. 
you begin to feel satisfied when you've received a necessary amount of nutrition from these high carb whole foods. As long as you're not eating too quickly and you're taking the time to chew and taste these foods, your sensory specific satiety mechanism will help you know when you've had enough of a particular flavor or nutrient. Sweet processed foods such as candy bars, cookies, and cakes contain other non-sweet ingredients such as salt, fat, and sometimes even chemical flavor enhancers or appetite stimulants. Savory processed foods often contain non-savory ingredients including sugar, monosodium glutamate, artificial flavors, and emulsifiers to stimulate your appetite and keep you wanting more. This magic combination of multiple contrasting flavors is specifically designed to bypass your sensory specific satiety so that you are likely to eat more and eat more frequently. The stomach stretch reflex is your other predominant satiety mechanism. When you eat a meal, stretch receptors in the walls of your stomach are activated. As the amount of food in your stomach increases, these stretch receptors send a signal to your brain to reduce your appetite. As your stomach stretches past a certain point, it becomes uncomfortable for you to continue to eat. Processed foods tend to be more calorie dense than whole foods because they lack intact fiber and water. Because of this, it is easier to eat thousands of unnecessary calories before your stomach sends a signal to your brain that says, slow down or I'm full. In addition, low fiber or no fiber processed foods leave your stomach fairly quickly, especially if they are low fat processed foods, which means you'll feel like eating again within a short amount of time. Whole foods not only contain intact fibers and a higher water content than processed foods, but they are also less calorie dense. You could eat apples, broccoli, beans, or boiled potatoes until you feel absolutely stuffed and you would still not consume too many calories. Although food manufacturers often add fiber to packaged foods, these added fibers act differently from the intact fiber found in whole foods. Added fiber has been hydrolyzed and processed significantly, resulting in shorter cellulose chains that do not make you feel as full. When you switch to a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet like we recommend, you will likely need to eat a lot more food than you think, even if you're trying to lose weight. Even the more calorie-dense, low-fat, plant-based whole foods, such as sweet fruits, potatoes, beans, and whole grains, have less calorie density than most of the high-fat processed foods you're accustomed to eating. Just to maintain your weight, the portion sizes of your meals will need to double or triple. The high carb food master list. Below this video, you will see a list of high carb foods that are divided into green light and yellow light categories. Green light foods can be eaten ad libitum without restriction until you are comfortably full. There is no need to control your intake of green light foods because your innate stomach stretch reflex satiety mechanism should prevent you from eating more calories than your body needs. Yellow light foods tend to be more calorie dense than green light foods. And because of that, we recommend eating them in small quantities. In addition, we encourage you to eat yellow light foods slowly to activate your sensory specific satiety mechanism and prevent you from consuming excess calories. Use the list of high carb foods below as your encyclopedia of low fat, plant-based whole foods. If you're curious about what foods are in each category, scroll down to see which fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains are included in the Mastering Diabetes program. The list below is sorted in order of decreasing calorie density. This is your chance to open your mind to the power of high carb foods from whole sources and experience the true power of a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet.